All right, I'm excited to be here today with the founders of the Whole Heart Brotherhood. Jeremy, Jonathan, Jesse, welcome to you. And uh, the first question I, I wanna ask uh, is, how would you describe the, um, who, who is the Whole Heart Brotherhood for? And um, what does it help them do or do for them? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, so we're creating a community for men who want to just practice connecting with other men. I mean, it's kind of as simple as that, just kind of to uh, get a little bit outside of the boxes that we might get put into by the way we were brought up. Um, and yeah, just practice reaching for each other a little bit more. Yeah, thank you. And um, it is so great that you're doing this because I see a lot of support for support groups um, offline and online these days, mostly online for women. You know, there's a lot of women's circles and women's groups. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, I, I don't know if I'm making too much of a stereotype, but I think women also tend to be better at um, forming uh, relationships that are supportive, et cetera. And uh, we guys tend to be more, uh, tend to be less, less good at that. I think, I think there was research in saying that, you know, kind of there's, um, men with friends you know kind of that that de depletes over the years but i don't know if anyone any of you can can share something like that yeah let, maybe maybe we could start there what what is what is the problem why 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 are we creating this yeah well i can tell you how i noticed the problem in my own life is having the realization that while i had friends of a variety of genders given the choice between like going to a movie with a male friend or going to a movie with like a female or gender fluid or non-binary friend, I would consistently choose anyone but the male friend. Like there's a way that I was myself holding back and reaching out to the men in my life, even for not very vulnerable connection, like just let's go see a movie, let's go have a beer, let alone the more vulnerable stuff. And the more vulnerability was involved, the more it, the sphere of people I was willing to have that connection with got smaller and smaller to where my full self was really only available to someone I was in romantic partnership with. And I just got to a point where that felt really frustrating and like not enough. Um, and I realized I really need more support in my life than just a romantic partner can provide. I, I, I heard this term years ago from a very smart person. He said, rugged coupleism. <laughs> <laughs> rugged coupleism. It's like, yeah, it's just, uh -huh. so it's so yeah. true. Um, yeah. And, and keep going. I want, I want to hear from uh, uh, Jeremy. I haven't heard you. Share yeah. Yet. Yeah. yeah I, I definitely feel like very similar of like that. There's a, I, um, only like parts of myself I share, I end up sharing with my partner. Um, and there's trying to foster that connection with men um, has it, it's it's a little bit like going upstream for me. Um, like I do have some of those connections, and um, Jonathan and Jesse are ones that we've been actually practicing this other way of like letting ourselves be vulnerable with each other um, and practicing this brotherhood together. Um, but for me, also there's been. I think it's, it's been hard to call myself a man actually growing up um, because of just what it meant and that there's resistance to the identity of like, I'm not supposed to show emotions. I'm not supposed to, um, I'm supposed to like be this womanizer type personality that just what never felt like me or who I wanted to be. Um, and that, that for me like was a lot of the, um, motivation of what I see as the problem of like I bringing together a place of connection for men where we can support each other and move beyond what like we've had to be and bring be all of who we are. Yeah, awesome. And so what are some of the skills that the Whole Heart Brotherhood will um, teach or practice that you know, men could bring, you know, into their lives, their work, their relationships. Empathic listening, I think, is a big one. Mm -hmm. um, and what, what does that mean? 
just really being able like empathy is just sort of the ability to kind of get what it's like to, in someone else's world and so like just the ability to kind of hold space for someone in that way when you're in connection with them like oh okay like i get that your world is kind of shaped like this and it might be a little different than my world but i'm able to hold the complexity of the two of our worlds together and how they might be kind of interacting with each other um i feel like that's a skill that will be developing and awesome um and jonathan i'll just we'll kind of go in that order jonathan what about what's another yeah. skill another one is self-awareness um mm -hmm. and that's that's really where the whole part of whole heart came from is this realization that mm -hmm. part of our socialization as men is learning to deny huge parts of ourselves and just kind of sweep them under the rug uh, because uh, we get taught that they're not acceptable um, that they're too much um, that they're not appropriate for most contexts and so just cultivating the self-awareness to like have an intimate relationship with all of myself and mm. like welcome myself when i'm angry and to mm -hmm. welcome myself when i'm grieving and to welcome myself when i'm bursting with joy and mm. to like allow all of those things to happen fully is a big part of what we want to give to people uh give to men is this opportunity to just fully express your whole self yeah, this is awesome. And uh, Jeremy, before you yeah. go there, I just want to share. I uh, this today has been a bit of a strange day for me, um, uh, and you know, several things happened. But one of the things that happened was that I I got angry at mm -hmm. a particular social media thread that I saw. Um, it I guess maybe it painted me in a kind of bad light, um, and I probably have some mm -hmm. you know some fault in that. Uh, but yeah, I got, I got real angry. I'm like, people don't understand <laughs> what I'm talking about. Who and, um, and of course I, I, I went to my wife and I don't think I went to my wife in the best state, uh, uh, <laughs> to have this, to have this expression. I'm like, you don't understand me either. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, this is where the whole, whole heart brotherhood needs to come in. Right. Like, 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 yeah, Definitely. it's like, it's like learning to be with, like, I think with you know, this is, this is interesting. And now this is turning into a therapy session for George. Um, <laughs> like, like, I think, I don't know if this is true for other men, but I know that I have had a difficult time. Like when I'm angry, I don't want to talk about it mm. because mm. if I talk about it, I get more angry. Whereas, mm -hmm. whereas I'm like all my life I've, I've been like this. Right. And I know this, of course, um, chance women are more open to, you know, they want to talk, talk it through, talk about it. And then that makes them feel better. I'm like, mm. I'm not like that. <laughs> I talk about, mm -hmm. I get more angry because I start thinking about those issue issues. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you're talking about. You know, Jonathan with self-awareness being, uh, being okay with these different feelings and the wholeness, uh, that we learn, um, is such a powerful, uh, skill and skill set really to, mm -hmm. to operate in, in life with. But, um, Jeremy, do you want to share? Anything? Yeah, on, I mean, on, on that, actually, that um, so another skill that we want to bring in is um, calling in versus calling out. Um, and this works in particular way of like, just as you were saying with anger, and when you're not able to necessarily have that self reflection in the moment, how can we as a community um, hold space to not shame you for having that anger? but instead call you into noticing yourself and like br bring you into that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, George, I love that you're, uh, I love just a little slice of life that you're sharing with us. I think yeah. that's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I imagine all of us can relate in one way or another. Like that's, that's totally on point. I think with what we're right. up to. And, yeah, the space yeah. 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 And even there's a skillfulness in noticing, Oh, if I talk about it, I'm just going to get more angry and that's part of what we want to share too is like we're not going to make you talk about it if you're like that's not actually going to serve me <laughs> right and so right. so right. so then it's like we're going to get creative together as a group and say okay what can we do that does help you to move this energy through you and not intensify it and we can support you in that yeah that's mm -hmm. so cool so um jeremy is there another uh, kind of part of the brotherhood or skill that you want to want to share um, I mean, that, I, that was one chair. I can, I can share another, uh, which is, um, say ownership language. 
is a big piece too, or just having a sense of taking responsibility um, for your own feelings, for your own experience. Um, and having that orientation of like, this is what I know to be true. And beyond that is a story I'm making up about what's, uh, what's happening. And so that we can be in connection around that, but owning our own experience is just a way of relating that I think we're all familiar and being in similar communities around um, that, that allows for us as a foundation um, to, to have connection and, um, and, and cleanness with what is mine, what's somebody else's. I have an example of how uh, we might do that in our group. Awesome. Um, mm. Yeah. Cause, cause a lot of us, so the, the, three, the three of us share some common origins, at least in some of this facilitation, mm -hmm. um, in the authentic relating community of practice. And so some of the mm -hmm. tools that we're bringing are authentic relating games, which is kind of like relational yoga. Um, mm -hmm. like you're breaking down little different facets of being in connection and relation with people and like stretching and practicing new skills, sort of like that. So one way, what Jeremy just said about ownership language, there's a game called truths and the way that we would play that is just by saying when you blank I felt mm -hmm. blank so it's like Jeremy when you shared that I felt grateful or something mm -hmm. like that and so mm -hmm. that is practicing ownership language notice I'm not saying like when you judged me or like when you uh now I'm struggling <laughs> to do the opposite thing but like yeah there's there's lots of ways where we could not own our experience of just like projecting onto someone else yeah like assume yeah. Is going on I them. could say so. you you did this and that's why I feel this way. Totally. Right. Well, right. It's totally. like, and it's yeah. your fault and you got to make right. me feel better. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, that's exactly. a true experience. That, that's an experience that you're having for sure. And it's, yeah. so it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, how can we hold that and hold, yeah. you know, right. kind of the, the complexity yeah, that I was speaking right. to earlier. Right. Like it's your responsibility to behave, say the right thing so that I feel good, mm. you know? And, mm -hmm. and well, there's a lot of that going on in society. Um, yeah. So, uh, who, who would you say um, this, the whole heart brotherhood is really uh, kind of designed for? Like maybe describe the type of man, you know, um, what they're going through or what they're wanting to experience in their life. Um, Jonathan, how about, uh, we'll start with you. Yeah, I think a big part of it is fundamentally they're lonely. Um, mm -hmm. There is just this creeping loneliness in the life of men that gets more and more intense as we get older. And I've felt it in my own life. I see it in the lives of the men who are my friends and the men who are in, in my family. And I really want to counteract that. Like, I want to make sure that like we have strong bonds of love to support us throughout mm -hmm. our life and for that life to be a really rich one. Um, and honestly, like what you mentioned earlier, George, about like how women seem to get socialized to be better at this. I feel jealous of women a lot when I see uh, the bonds that they mm -hmm. are able to have. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I want that. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. and so, yeah, I just really, that's <laughs> fundamentally, it's like, it's for the man who's looking at himself and feeling lonely. And he's looking at the, the women around him and saying, why can't I have what they have? Um, and mm -hmm. who's just wanting to have a more healthy and warm connection with other men. Mm. Beautiful. And, and what's the, um, I think I actually, I'll just say, I, I think we all remember like what best friends were like when we were younger. I mean, we, 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 we were more likely to have had best friends when, you know, mm -hmm. elementary school, you know, maybe high school, maybe college. And then those friendships start to fade away as we, as we leave high school or college because we're not we don't go to class the same you know go to sports teams or any other activities like at that kind of rhythm so uh maybe a question i have for for you jeremy is how does the whole heart brotherhood um bring uh that kind that kind of friendship back and especially mm -hmm. these days we do everything online um so whole heart brotherhood of course is starting as an online community so right. what are what are some some of the activities that that uh, that we're going to be doing? Yeah, um, so we're starting with our um, first course, which is going to be the art of brotherhood. Um, and in this, we're 
meeting, um, meeting every week. And we're also going to be um, pairing people up and having these um, activities. This, these meetings are going to be less information based and more actually being with each other and having these kind of connections, these um, and going deep really fast. Like we've shared that we've had this common background of authentic relating and um, have like create these events so that people can in a short period of time have very deep connections with each other um, that then can expand and take over a six week period and remain friends um, if that relationship, like if there's mutual interest in that. Um, can you give an example of, uh, let's say in, in that experience, Yeah. Um, let's say I was paired up with someone like what, what, what's happening in that exercise? Is there a question that you're sure. asking or? Sure. Um, one of my favorite uh, authentic relating games um, is called Empathy. Um, Empathy is a game where um, if I'm talking, I'll talk for two minutes um, on just anything that's al most alive in my heart, something I want to share. And you'll listen. Um, and then you'll take a minute and reflect back to me what you heard. Um, and then I'll go again on anything that I think you either missed or hearing that reflection, this is what I really want you to get. And in this kind of back and forth, there's leaving this feeling at the end of like, you really get me. You've really heard me and felt me way more than I normally feel in a conversation. That's awesome. Awesome. Um, Jesse, is there another exercise or uh, part of the, 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 the brotherhood experience that you want to bring forward? Or maybe there's I another mean, authentic relating exercise. Yeah. I mean, kind of what I want to say is that we're, we're, we're really holding space for this to be kind of an evolutionary container. And so, mm -hmm. um, we don't, we don't quite know yet exactly the details of how it looks. You know, I think a lot of that depends on who shows up and who's drawn to mm -hmm. this work and, mm -hmm. you know, who's in our, in our cohort, you know, and there, there is a way we'll, we'll be practicing some give and take with the men that show up um, to kind of design it around their needs at that time. Um, and yeah, just practice some responsive leadership in that way. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we have a whole tool belt to pull from not just from authentic relating games, but from presence practices like circling mm -hmm. or um, co-counseling or, you know, improv games or, you know, we've got all kinds of stuff that we've got at our mm -hmm. disposal. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of it that will be kind of responding to the real time needs of the group. Awesome. Yeah, I'd, I'd say we're, we're kind of like jazz musicians who've been practicing <laughs> and practicing every single right. scale in the book. And like, uh -huh. we're going to show up knowing a lot of scales, but we don't necessarily know exactly what the melody is going to be until we're there and we have the people in the room and we say, here's what this room seems to need. Yeah, beautiful. To, to the best of our taste and ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Emergent style of leadership. Yeah. And um, I, I just want to spend a minute or two talking about what is the, what do you envision to be, um, I guess, a changed man <laughs> or, mm -hmm. or a, a more whole, you know, a more whole man? Like, like, how does that, what does that look like in that man's life? Um, okay. what we could talk about relationship, we could talk about his work or his family relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I'll let any of you start with that. For me, I think the, the essence, essential word is welcoming, like mm -hmm. wel welcoming whatever arises in himself, welcoming what mm -hmm. arises in the others that he's in relationship with, and just being like, it is okay for this to be happening. This is welcome in my world. Um, and just, it's a, it's a way of being in harmony with whatever is happening. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect or finished but it's like an attitude of mm -hmm. when I'm not feeling welcoming, I know that there's some part of me that's capable of that and I can trust that I'll get there. Right. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Jeremy, any, any, how else would you describe? And, yeah, right, I now, think and right now, Jeremy, I just want to say you're, you're a new dad. Um, mm. And so you have <laughs> multiple <laughs> ways right. of expressing this. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So a lot of, a lot of this work I'm I'm also doing with new dads, um, and this is um, a broader 
scope of, of the same kind of work. Um, yeah, I'm, um, I think for me, uh, the one, I, the first thing that comes to mind actually with the question is it's not a destination and that is a constantly a practice. And it's constantly like being with what's emerging. Um, and it's not that um, being on a steady line. In fact, actually, that's kind of the opposite of what we're trying to do is the, there's a lot of this conditioning of needing to be a rock and being steady. Um, and it's okay to be off, off that baseline. Um, it's also just knowing how to find your way back and knowing how to be in connection with others and connection with yourself. Um, there's a, one of my favorite little lines is I'm bigger than anything that can happen to me. Um, as letting yourself expand to being able to notice what's happening, if it's triggering or whatever, and welcoming that. Um, as, as Johnson said, it all comes back to this welcoming of it and letting it, letting it be here. Jesse, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, just a quick one. Um, I think in my own life, one thing that I've really noticed as I've done men's work over the past six years is um, just my ability now to remember that I have a community or multiple communities that I'm part of and to reach mm -hmm. out for them for support when I need it mm -hmm. and to show up mm -hmm. for people who need support in those communities as well. That to me feels like such a fundamental change from the way that I grew up just being kind of an isolated nerd who would take refuge in my computer, you know, and um, or, or books, um, which, you know, I still do that sometimes, but I think the difference is that now I just, I'm better at remembering like, okay, I can reach for people in this way and it feels really good when I do. So. Awesome. Um, well, we have a few minutes left and I want to make sure people understand who are watching this a couple things. Uh, actually, one thing I want to ask is, uh, I, I know there are a lot of women probably watching this or part of this. Um, how would you, uh, you know, a, a lot of times it's, uh, I mean, maybe I'll speak for myself and the men I know, we don't tend to reach out for help as mm -hmm. maybe as readily as, as some women do. And so if there is a, a woman watching this and saying, ah, there's somebody in my life, um, you know, my brother, son, uh, friend, colleague, um, who, who would probably benefit from this. Um, what's, what's maybe, what's a way to let them know about it? Maybe just watch this video. I don't know. What's, what's your, what's your suggestion? Um, Jonathan, how, anything you want to say? Or any of you, any of you can share. Yeah, I, it's a great question. Um, because I think something we've noticed already is often women are among our biggest fans. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. because, because I think they see the need for this more than the men themselves often do because mm. as men, we got so mm -hmm. practiced at denying yeah. parts of ourselves yeah. and sweep it under the rug. Um, so yeah, I, I would Man say, up. yeah, <laughs> right. Right. A, a lot of the time, yeah. a lot of the time what, what's needed, and I've definitely felt this from women in my life is just. For someone, number one, to let me know how much they love me first. Mm -hmm. And then to say, I like, I really mm -hmm. think you need some support here and and I want to encourage you in doing that for yourself as a gift to yourself. And when the women in my life have done that for me, <laughs> I have felt so open to like exploring in that direction that that they said, Hey, I think there's something for you over there. Um but yeah, I think the key to it was like that it it wasn't this message of there's something wrong with you. It's just like I want to support you in growing into yeah. what you have the potential to be. Yeah, I was I was I was I was actually thinking like, um, you know, if my wife said, "Hey, this thing looks really cool. I just I saw this somewhere and it looked really cool. I thought you might enjoy it." Um, you know, might get pique my curiosity to kind of check it out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, um, logistical questions quickly before we go mm -hmm. is. Um, how often uh, do, do, the, do people meet in the group and any other logistical things that we need to know about? Mm -hmm. So, um, well, so we're actually launching, um, we're doing a free taster event, like a free intro event um, 
on let's see it is uh friday uh may 22nd in the yeah and, and by the way if people might be watching this months from now so uh, right. you probably i imagine you guys will have that um oh, on cool. a regular basis so be sure to yeah. okay. check out the website for all that so yeah, totally. so, so, so first thing is really to go to the free taster event and, right, uh, and we'll be doing those periodically. So probably, you know, no matter when you're watching this, then we should have yeah, one coming up relatively right. soon. And to get involved means, uh, um, I think the cost is pretty reasonable. I, I'm not going to say that because I don't know what it's going to be by the time people watch this. But from what I understand, it's it's very reasonable, mm -hmm. very affordable, and um, for the kind of support that you get. Uh, how often do you guys expect to meet, um, like as as men participate, like once a week or, yeah. Yeah, we, we plan on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, we plan on. We plan on doing once a week for our the courses that we're running, um, and there will be like two hours um, each time, and be for a set period of time that you're in a certain cohort, um, and within that, you'll also be part of a larger men's community that is just ongoing. It has constant flow of like it's basically a private social social network. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind yeah. of as much as you want to participate in that. Exactly. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. 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 Okay. Website. Wholeheartbrotherhood.com. Wholeheartbrotherhood.com. So be sure yeah. to check that out, guys and gals, for your guys. Um, thank you so much for doing this work. It's really, it's really needed and really glad that you're the ones facilitating it. So. Thanks so much, George. Thank yeah. you. Thank Have you. Fun. Yeah, thanks so much.